Okay, today we're going to learn how to build one of these simple synchronous motors here that run on top of a wall wart, also known as a little power transformer. So this is what we're going to build. Looks super simple, but there's some gotchas and we'll go through those. Things that we're going to need though, one thing you will have to order online is this diametrically magnetized ring magnet here. Uh, half inch size works real good. That's the one we're going to be using today. It's from K&J Magnetics Incorporated. A lot of people out there sell these ring magnets. Very few sell them diametrically magnetized. Okay, that's what you need. Also for a shaft today, we're using this uh, Home Depot round bar. Okay, it's 1 8 inch and 48 inches long, so we can cut it in pieces and make our shafts and other things we're going to need to do with it. Let me just kind of zoom in a little bit on the barcode and on their SKU number there. Also, the magnet is a R828DIA. That's the one you want to order. Okay. This wall wart here, not every wall wart is going to work with these motors. The key thing you need to do is find a wall wart that has a good magnetic field. I'm going to take this little magnet here and hold it over the wall wart. I can feel a vibration. Some of these other wall warts over here, I hold it over there. I cannot feel a vibration at all. You need to be able to feel a vibration. Next we're going to do a test here. I've got a little swizzle stick with the magnet on there. Now the swizzle stick is not going to act as a shaft. It's going to let the magnet freely rotate on it. So this is just a test here on this wall wart to see how well it does. Finally now I have it going. So I can look and see at that height that it will run. And I'm not going to try to make it take a measuring tape and put it down there. I'm just eyeballing it where the, uh, the bottom of the magnet is. Okay, it just stopped on me. I got too close. As you can see on this one I made earlier, the open part is on the top, flat part is on the bottom. That fortunately allows this one to sit pretty stable. Once it gets running, it will actually stay on top of this wall wart. An earlier model, which I'll show here in a moment, was way too tall, <clears throat> too top heavy. I had to tape it in place to get it to work. This one is actually sitting a little bit closer to the wall wart than it needs to be. Every once in a while I have to kind of slightly lift it and let it drop as I spin it to get the thing started. Now the advantage of this wall wart being small um, is the shaft here and the clearance of the propeller we're going to put on later. Um, if your wall wart that you're using is larger, you want to have a longer shaft so your propeller will clear the wall wart casing and won't run into it. This one also has some metal up top so the magnet up as, uh, as well as being rotated by the magnetic field has got a little bit of the magnet pulling towards some metal in this which keeps it seated very well on top. I don't have to tape it. I'm actually able to rotate this thing around, adjust it. The magnet likes a certain spot there where some metal's at. I can rotate it around and it'll behave and stay right in place. Um, let me show you my earlier model 
that didn't have this advantage. Okay, this is the earlier model here. Just a moment, let me get some electricity here. I have to, this uh, power strip has a tilt in it. That was no good. That's problem one. The pill bottle I used for a casing is way too tall and that was a problem. I ended up having to tape it because it's top heavy. But it does sit up a little bit higher than the earlier one I showed you which makes it a little bit easier to spin up. I don't obviously have to lift it. I do have to tilt it with this stupid uh, thing having a wobble in it. Now for a housing and casing with the magnet, we're going to use some of this candy that I got at 99 cent store. They have several different types with these plastic cylinder sleeves there. Uh, most of them work pretty good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this off at about one inch and we'll come back and continue. Okay, next we're going to have to put some holes in the cylinder for the shaft. We want them the same height and we want them directly across from each other. So I've cut this piece of paper half an inch high. That's going to help me determine the height of the holes I'll mark them. I will fold this paper evenly so I'll have a crease here. By this crease I will know exactly where to mark the hole on that side. Where these two edges meet on this side I'll know exactly where to mark that hole. So let me do that with a piece of paper and we'll be right back. Okay I've taken a sharpie marker and mark there where my crease was at where I folded the paper and over here where the two other ends meet I've marked that spot also. Two, two and a half inches worth of this shaft here. Alright, we're in the kitchen now. We're going to take the longer piece, the one that I'm not going to use for the shaft, we're going to heat it up. It's going to be the hole puncher because we want to keep our shaft as clean as possible and what we're hoping to do with the hole puncher is get through one hole and through the other hole and keep going a little bit so we drag out all the excess plastic when we do that. Okay, we're up to this point where we've got this much done so far. Now we have to get the magnet on the shaft. Now we have to get the shaft, the magnet mounted on the shaft. When I, I've actually cut the shaft on both ends because I've been using that long piece of metal. This end previously goes in now but it's acting like this end earlier would not go in because where it had been cut had pushed the metal out it would not go in the magnet okay one more thing we have to do is make sure the shaft will go in the hole what you're going to run into when we go to put it in the uh, container, it's the strongest magnetic part of the magnet is on the outside. Where we're trying to get in this hole, it's going to constantly try to jump that way or that way because of the strong magnetic field. This end will go in now. What I did initially when I cut it with the 10 snips, it's like this end. It will not go in because I've deformed the end of the um, where the cut was at 
So what I had to do with this end is take it outside with some um, a cinder block and scrape it like this and rotate it to sand down the end so it will go in to the magnet. Okay, so now we're ready for the next step. Putting it in the container. Now, you have to be able to get your finger in here at the same time to hold it tightly against that hole. Okay, once we get it to the, that side of the magnet, we're home free. We slide it in. Now comes the tricky part. We need to put, because it still can rotate like that, that's no good. For the shaft to turn the propeller, we need to lock it in. We need to put a tiny dab of glue right there where the shaft meets the magnet on both sides. The whole trick is don't get the glue on the container, don't get it on the shaft. It's got to be just at that spot where they meet. Let it thoroughly dry so that absolutely none of it, when you flip it over this way to the other side, will get on the container. Then you glue the other side and thoroughly let it dry before you let it come up and touch anything. So I'm going to stop the camera and do that. Well, I got it knotted in there and I noticed I didn't get my holes exactly right in the container. It's a little bit off-centered, but, and it also took me quite a while to get this thing to spin up correctly. I had to keep lifting it up, moving it around, trying different things, but it is spinning now. So we're going to add a propeller to it next. Okay, this is one of those little things out of the middle of a Pizza Hut pizza. We're going to cut the legs off of it and use that for a propeller. There's one leg cut off and we're going to do the same with the other ones. Okay, next we're going to heat up our utility shaft, not the one we use, but the one we use to burn holes. We're going to go back to our propeller and try to get a uh, hole all the way through. So you can see that I was able to get the shaft barely through the hole there. That's deep enough. I'm still going to add a dab of super glue on that. So one more recommendation. I would recommend that you buy at least a couple of magnets. Get a couple of uh, these plastic shaft uh, cylinder containers that you're going to make these with. Uh, the long length of shaft. And a couple of those extra white things when you go to pizza hut that go in the middle of the pizza because you may have to make this more than once to have it come out right. Again this is the earlier model that I built the first time around and it started on the first spin. It's a lot sta more stable uh, than the one we just went through building and you can see there's not a whole lot of difference in them. Small details. One thing I did on the new one, uh, I think I should have had the shaft a little bit longer. Makes it easier to spin up. Um, but again, you have to do it once or twice to get it right. Well, I trimmed down the propeller to keep it from running into the wall wart, which it was rotating now and then and running into that and added a lot of WD-40 around the, uh, the holes there and also the edges of the magnet. And now it finally started pretty easy and it's behaving, it's pretty stable. And this is the one we just built that's a little bit off-center here, but 
it's finally working okay. Running good. <laughs>